This is Wes Most, and welcome to Most Questionable, presented by Baseline. Today, we will be taking a look at the situation involving the Vincent Ambrosio footage and asking one question. When exactly did that footage become fair game? Without any further ado, let's ask some motherfucking questions. A lot of people have asked me in recent weeks at what point I became convinced that the motives behind Chris Hansen's return were anything less than sincere, and the answer is simple. The moment I learned about the Vincent Ambrosio footage. No, I promise this is not another video about the website, but I want you to think about something for a minute. This man reportedly has 10 Emmys, and as Baked Salmon eloquently pointed out, is also a four-time recipient of the Edward R. Morrow Award, given for abiding by a code of ethics, demonstrating technical expertise, and exemplifying the importance and impact of journalism as a service to the community. And boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, uh, um, I call shenanigans on that shit. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. While Big Salmon and I created over 90 minutes of long-winded analysis, pointing out the many technical flaws and minimal impact this type of journalism have had since Chris returned, let's just look at that first qualification, abiding by a code of ethics. And this is what brings me to Vinnie Ambrosia. Now as a disclaimer and something I want to make 100% clear, I am in no way excusing what Vinnie Ambrosio or any of these predators have done. There is no excusing abuse of this type at all, and each and every one of them deserve jail time or worse. Unless, of course, they didn't mean to do it, which in case I call shenanigans on the state of Maine. Evil shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. What's the dumbest, most embarrassing, possibly illegal thing you've ever done in your life? No, not speeding, underage drinking, Beer? or accidentally backing your car over that hooker after a fistful of quaaludes and bottle of hot damn. Hot damn! Just when you thought you wanted to get fucked up. I'm looking at you, baked salmon. But imagine someone recording that footage, sitting on it for years, and then later as you try and pick up the pieces of your life, they decide to release it. Okay, now imagine this isn't just some random person. It's Ted Koppel with the fat video you sent him on accident. Okay, I, I was trying to get it to Ted Danson. Or Katie Couric with the fat compilation you created over a three-day weekend that coincided with the free trial of Pornhub. Again, I, I was trying to get it to Ted Danson. Fucking autocorrect. And imagine there is nothing you can do about it. This celebrity, or in this case, this shell of a celebrity, is not only releasing this footage, but selling it on a fly-by-night website like it's the Kim Kardashian sex tape. In most circles, including YouTube, this should be considering bullying at the very least, and digital extortion at the worst, because I ask you, if the family of Vincent Ambrosio would have offered Chris Hansen, say, 200 grand not to release the footage, would he have sold them the rights to the project, thus ensuing it never would have seen the lighter day? Or would he have protected the children and released the footage to spread awareness to parents? You know, I get when you go out there and you do something that's new and cutting edge and controversial that has become sort of iconic in pop culture, pop culture as well as, you know, something that I've tried to do uh, to, to make the internet a safer place. You can't claim to want to help kids and make a difference and then put all your videos behind a paywall. It would be like calling 911 for help reviving someone with CPR, but they won't do shit until you drive to Walmart and get them $300 in Google Save Play him. cards. Save him. It should have been me. And on top of this, Chris wants you to know that this is just one of the things he does, and it's not exactly his top priority, even though he sold a website he billed as a priority under the guise of investigations already being underway back in April. And, and the reality is, as important as this work is, and as great of a following as it has, it's one part of my portfolio of work that I, I get up and do every day. I've got many, many other projects, so I try to balance it, try to get it all done. Okay, so back to Vince. Vince was arrested, his name and image were released in connection to the bust, and the footage was shelled. From some accounts, Crime Watch Daily did not want blood on their hands after the suicide of Lewis Conrad that ultimately led to the end of To Catch a Predator, so they opted to not share the footage for fear of Vincent committing suicide or otherwise hurting himself, thus hurting their already fledgling brand. Chris, who presumably owned the footage due to his successful scam Kickstarter campaign, held on to the tapes while he bounced from one thing to the next 
before finally hitting rock bottom in January 2019 with a very public arrest of his own. This move by Crime Watch Daily to ultimately cover their own asses would be the saving grace for a struggling Chris Hansen years later. Had the footage aired back with the other Hansen vs Predators episodes, it would have just become part of the lore and another person to eventually end up in a Mr. Gigi release. What do you do now? Um, nothing. Besides go online and try to talk to young girls. Toasty! But never releasing it only increased its value like a fucking retired Beanie Baby. So as far as I can tell, Vincent did his time and didn't re-offend, but when Chris needed money, this confrontation was his golden ticket. Again, I'm not minimizing or excusing anything Vincent Ambrosio did, but there is something so ethically questionable about a journalist and Emmy Award winner dusting off a confrontation from several years ago and using it as bait in a very clear scam. In earlier interviews, Chris spoke with compassion about not releasing the footage because Vincent was the same age as one of his sons and that his mental health was the main concern. Now with Chris in a money crunch, mental health be damned, he was going to tease the release and make promo after promo leading up to the launch of his website before almost ceasing the updates altogether in favor of using his live streams as thinly disguised infomercials for his bullshit website. Yes, sir, you can see more of the Ambrosio story and much more exclusively on my new website, HansenVersusPredators.com. Sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. Now that the excitement of the launch has cooled and the majority of people who are going to pay have already paid and in some cases been refunded, the site has gone from Hanson discussing predators to breaking news about Jeffrey Epstein that had already been reported hours earlier by actual legitimate news sources and for some fucking reason, the case of Elisa or Elisa, Elisa Lamb, Elizabeth, the girl who was in the elevator. She gets out, she looks around, steps back in, steps to the side, back towards the wall. And the winner, the outstanding regional news story, investigative reporting. They really do seal these things. Where does this fit into your theme of hunting predators? How is this not a bait and switch? You promise the people filet mignon, but you're only serving steakums and Wonder Bread. It's under 50 cents per portion. Oh, I see. On your website, in this bio here, it says you've always had an interest in disappearances. How about instead of covering this mystery, you cover why you failed to deliver on Kickstarter promises because that one would probably interest more of your current and former fans. Can I do that? Chris Hansen is now the retired baseball player, complaining that today's players make too much money, have too much power, and don't respect the game. Only those guys? They usually do it from a broadcast booth on a national stage. You? You do it on YouTube for an audience of hundreds. This isn't, you know, going online and luring one guy to a park and pouncing on him. There's a lot more that goes into it. You're 100% right, Chris. And you know the difference between you and them? They are actually out there doing it. You can question their methods and scale of their operation, but go to the city's pedo poachers, anxiety war, Pop Squad and more operate, and I promise you people think twice before approaching minors online. You know, I've got to go out and do it. I've got to put a team together. I've got to... Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out. Yes, you pave the way, but don't for one second think that makes you infallible. At one time, horse racing was the most popular sport in America, Kmart was one of the largest retail chains in the world, and Latoya Jackson didn't have my fat video. But times change, shit evolves, people move on, and Ted Koppel traded my fat video for a pack of magic beans. So I guess this is my fat tape. Um, who would have thought that Chris Hansen returning to predator hunting would actually take the focus off of hunting predators? It would be comical if it wasn't so damn sad. I'm Wes Most, and that was Most Questionable. If you enjoyed what you heard, please like and subscribe, and rub your body up against the screen of whatever device you're watching this on. If not, 
Let me know why you disagree in the comments. Shit, let me know why you agree in the comments because I like to hear about why I'm right. Cat G, if you're listening, let me know what you would like to see me analyze next. And Yap Yap, if you're listening, sup girl. From the Malik Washington Mobile Command Center, this is Westmost, and I'm out. Coming up next, it's a sneak peek of Codstock 2020. Don't go away. Woke up, caught on the floor. Is there a message from Kayla Moore? Tripped on butt, hit my head on a cup. And throwing up, I noticed I was late. Dirty shirt and Boston hat. Rolled a sick in seconds flat. Made my way to my desk and it auto-died. And I just smiled because my life's a dream. Take a road trip down to Bowling Green. I'd love to show.